started inshallah Sheikh Bilal Ismail was born in Durban, South Africa. He is the founder and director of the Imam Development Program. He memorized the Quran while studying at school and went on to complete high school in 1998. Sheikh Bilal then went on to do a diploma in computer science in 1999, as well as qualifying as a Microsoft Certified Systems Engineer. He was accepted into the Islamic University of Madinah in 2001 where he completed his diploma in Arabic followed by a BA in Islamic law from the faculty of Sharia. After graduating, he returned to South Africa where he had been teaching Fiqh and Tafsir weekly classes in Durban since the summer of 2007 and says he is still a student of knowledge and will always be. Okay, khair inshallah. Jaid. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka al-abdihi wa rasulihi nabina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Amma ba'd. Ahlan wa sahlan wa marhaban bikum. I welcome our dear brothers and sisters in al-Islam. Ahlan wa sahlan wa marhaban bikum. The topic bi idhnillahi ta'ala is titled The Wish of Umar radiyallahu ta'ala an and the State of the Ummah. Allah musta'an. Ya abdallah, ya amat Allah. Ponder over the following. Yom al Qiyamah. People are running helter skelter from one person to another. People are running away from one another. Nafsi, 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 each one consumed with their own salvation. Running away from the other. Allah states, يوم يفر المرء من أخي وأمه وأبي وصاحبته ومنيه لكل امرئ منهم يوم إذن شأن يغني. On that day when a brother will flee from his brother, when a sister will flee from the rest of the family, the father runs away from the children, children running away from the parents. A father running away from the child that he would have given his life for in this world on Yom Al Qiyamah, he is running away from that kid. Subhanallah. Running away from the spouse, everyone nafsi, 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 nafsi. They will come to the Anbiya, Adam alayhi salam, Ibrahim alayhi salam, this prophet, that prophet, etc. Each one would say, no, 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 I cannot help you on this day. Allah is angry and anger. He was never angered like this before. And so I cannot help you people. Until they will come to our Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he would say, Ana laha, I am for it. He will bow down to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will praise Allah, a praising that he didn't even know before that day. Eventually, it would be said to him, Ya Muhammad, irfa ra'sak wa sal tu'ta wa shfa'tu shafa'. Oh Muhammad, lift up your head, rise up, ask and you will be given intercede and your intercession will be accepted. What will he respond? What would our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam respond. What does he respond? What does he say? Allahumma ummati ummati. Allahumma ummati ummati. Oh Allah, my ummah. Oh Allah, my ummah. Brothers and sisters, the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, like the other Anbiya, they were given a dua that this is guaranteed acceptance. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I'm not going to use my dua in this dunya. I'm going to save it and keep it as a credit for the hereafter. On behalf of whom? On behalf of his ummah. Allahumma ummati ummati. He said to the Sahaba, I wish I could meet my brothers. Right? I wish I could meet my brothers. They say, what do you mean? We are your brothers, Ya Rasulullah. He said, no, rather you people are my companions. My brothers are the ones who will come later on, later on, later on generations. They would never have seen me, but they would believe in me, subhanAllah. He had the shuk, he had this longing to meet with us, subhanAllah. Where are we from the ummah of Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Ya Abdullah, ya amat Allah, Umar ibn al-Khattab, radiyallahu ta'ala'an. He's sitting with the rest of the sahaba. 
and he says to them, make a wish. Make a wish. Jayid Umar was the Khalifa of the Muslims at the time. So he is sitting at the top of the pyramid. He is there with the bird's eye view. He's looking at the forest and not just the trees. And so Amir al muminin says, make a wish, make a wish. And so one Sahabi says, I wish that this entire room was full of gold. And then I would use it and also use it, etc., etc. Et the next companion, he says, I wish that this entire room was full of uh, silver. And then I would use and, and, and I would also use and spend in the part of Allah, etc., etc. And then the third one. He said rubies and diamonds and emeralds and pearls, etc. And he would spend on himself and family and stuff and also fi sabilillah. Then they said to Amir al muminin Umar ibn al-Khattab, Ya Amir al muminin uh, you asked us this question. There's probably a reason behind this question. Why, why did you ask us this question? What do you wish for? What would you like to wish for? What did he say? He said, I wish that this room was not full of gold or silver or rubies or emeralds. Rather, I wish that this room was full of people, full of men like Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah, Salim Mawla Abi Hudayfa, Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiyallahu ta'ala an, and then I would use them in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Abdullah, Ya Amat Allah. Umar understood that the most important, the most important resource is what? Human resources. The most important resource is not the money, is not the bank balance, is not the vehicle, is not the building, it's not the tiles, it's not the chandelier, but rather it's the people, the people and the people, subhanAllah. As one brother, he said, it's not uh, the direction you're going to take. You have a bus, just make sure you get the right people on the bus. As for the destination, then it will organically make itself and it would uh, it would uh, uh, it would organically present itself. You get the right people around the table, and you will find the solution. Bi iznillahi taala, Jaib. And so Umar ibn al Khattab, as the Khalifa of the Muslims, he understood as the Khalifa. What do I need? I need people. I need men. Men like who? Men like Abu Ubaidah ibn al Jarrah, Salim Mawla Abi Hudayfa, Mu'ad ibn Jabal. These were giants. Abu Ubaidah was the conqueror of Sham, conqueror of Sham. Once upon a time, Umar sent some money, some gifts, etc. for Abu Ubaidah. And when the messenger had come back, he said to the messenger, you know what, tell me, what, what did he do with it? And so the messenger says he took a little bit for himself and the rest of it he distributed. Umar said, Alhamdulillah, that there's still people like this in the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Salim Mawla Abi Hudayfa. This companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's in a battle and somebody says to him, are you not afraid? Maybe the enemy would attack from your flank where you are keeping guard. Maybe they will attack from that direction. He says, basically, what a waste of time half of the Quran I would be if I allowed them to attack from my side. What a waste of time, subhanAllah. Right? I'm not fit to be called a half of Quran if I allow them to attack from my side. Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala he was a Jabal, the leader of the ulama on Yawm al-Qiyamah. Right? He will be the leader of the ulama on Yawm al-Qiyamah. Mu'ad ibn Jabal, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sends him to Yemen, the famous hadith that you are going to come, you are going to a people who, uh, if they accept la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, then the matter of salah, etc, etc. Right? That famous hadith to do with Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala Remember also, subhanAllah, Mu'ad, uh, once upon a time, he's leading the salah and he's prolonging the salah. The one companion, he finished off his salah on his own and, and then he left. Later on, Mu'ad heard about the matter. He went to the guy, held the guy, took him to the Prophet sallallahu and he says, Ya Rasulullah, this guy is a munafiq. This guy is a hypocrite. Why is he a hypocrite? I'm in the middle of salah when well, he makes his own salah and he leaves. How can he do that? Prophet sallallahu must hear the story from both sides. And so he said to the man, tell me what happened with the story. The man said, you know, I've got places to go. I've got things to do. I've got appointments. And this man is making the salah very, 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 very long. Prophet Sallallahu reprimanded Mu'ad. He said, Ya Mu'ad, afatanun ant? Afatanun ant? Are you causing a fitna, O Mu'ad? You are causing a fitna, O Mu'ad. Why was the Prophet Sallallahu so stern and uh, shadid with Mu'ad? 
because Mu'ad, you supposed to know better. You're a talibul ilm. You are from amongst the ulama, etc. You should know better. But look, subhanallah, when the man urinated in the masjid, Prophet sallallahu showed him leniency. Prophet sallallahu was easy with him. Prophet sallallahu uh, uh, was kind and gentle with him, subhanallah. Why? What's worse? Somebody prolonging salah or somebody urinating in the masjid? What's worse? Urinating in the masjid, obviously. But why was the Prophet Sallallahu easy with that guy? Ah, because that man was a jahil. Because that man was ignorant. And so Prophet Sallallahu dealt with him like that. You're ignorant. We need to teach you. As for Mu'ad, you know better. We hold you to a higher station. We hold you to a higher yardstick, Jayid. It's unbecoming of you to be doing stuff like this here. Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala an. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, I wish that this room was full of people like Mu'ad ibn Jabal, like Salim Mawla Abi Hudayfa, like Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah, because then I will use them in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. That's the most important resource. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says that people are like camels. They're like what? They're like camels. Out of every 100 camels, you find one camel, mashallah, this is a good camel, it's strong, etc., etc., right? Otherwise, the rest of them are mashil hal, you know, they're like, okay, whatever, right? But out of every 100, you find a good camel. In South Africa, we had Sheikh Ahmed Didat. Has anybody in South Africa replaced Sheikh Ahmed Didat? The answer is no. The answer is no, right? Subhanallah, right? Why not possible? It is possible. But where's the people? Where's the men? Out of every 100, you find one that is worthy of riding. You need to question yourself as an ummati, where are you? are you? Are you somebody carrying the ham and the gham of the ummah? In fact, today, because there's so few doing Islamic work, etc., etc., right? Maybe in your algorithms, you think, MashaAllah, there's so much of khayr, there's so much of this, so much of that happening, etc., etc. That's in your algorithms. The reality is far from that, unfortunately, Allah must right? And so as one scholar said, that uh, if you're doing any type of Islamic work, you cannot give it up. You cannot say, no, khalas, it's over now, somebody else can do it. No, you are like in the front line. Just like how in jihad, in battle, right? in the thick of battle, you cannot say, well, I decided I'm going home. No, 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 you have to remain there. And leaving the battlefield when there's a battle on, this is a super major sin. And so similarly here, that you gave your name and you were doing the work, etc. You cannot just leave that position now because there's nobody to fill the gap. There's nobody to fill your place, subhanAllah. Right? Ya Abdullah, Ya Amat Allah. Every single one of you, you need to sit, you need to think, okay, Alhamdulillah, with regards to myself personally, well, has the time not come for me to give up my sins and this and that, etc., etc.? You need to sort out that matter and you need to, you need to decide that matter, inshallah, Jaid. That's with regards to your personal matters. Number two, with regards to your family and your friends and your extended family, etc. Sort out matters between you and them. Make things right, Jayid. These two matters here, generally in the past, the ulama would focus on this, brother, make your tazkiya, sort out your matters between you and the people. Alhamdulillah. Excellent. Alhamdulillah. Today, in 2023, that's not enough. That's not enough, Jayid. You need to do those two. And then number three, you need to do something for the Ummah. Those of you who are watching, those of you who are listening, you need to come up with some sort of project somewhere, get involved somewhere, something for the sake of the Ummah, Jayid. Wherever you feel that your heart resonates with it and you feel good there, etc., then yalla, bismillah, exert yourself there, walhamdulillah. Recently, we were in, uh, in one of the Pacific countries, and subhanallah, we met these youngsters, uh, 13, 14 years old, family of seven. These two boys were not going to school. So we asked them, why are you guys not going to school? He said, you know, the mother was there. She said, I've got like seven or eight kids. They're reverts. Uh, I cannot afford school fees for all of them. So I sent some. Okay. How much is the school fees? It was around 30 Australian dollars. 30 Australian dollars, right? So about 25 US dollars, 25 US dollars. Subhanallah. Imagine an ummati of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Young kids, they're not in school because they cannot afford $25 for the year. 
the one who is watching now, the one who is listening, you can probably on your WhatsApp family group tell everybody there, you know what, I've decided I want to do a project and we're going to fund 10 uh, madrasa and school students in whichever country it might be, right? But we're not going to stop there. We're going to fund them $25, $25, etc. Let's say five of them you fund, right? Excellent. In probably 30 minutes, you'll be able to raise up five times $25 and alhamdulillah, you will have the money. But don't stop there. Now, via the imam, give the imam the money. And the imam, this money is your amana, your responsibility. Make sure that the school fees are paid. Send me the receipt. Yeah, imam, uh, you need to follow up with these kids. Make sure that they come to madrasa. Make sure that they are learning. Uh, yeah, imam, uh, at the end of the year, I need the, the results. Yeah, imam, uh, I'm going to give a bonus to the one who gets extra marks and extra high marks at the end of the year. Uh, yeah, imam, next year, inshallah, this year I did five. Next year, I'll do seven, inshallah. Uh, I'll cover the bursaries for seven students. The following year, it's 14. The following year, it's 28. The following year, it's 38, etc. You never know, subhanallah. In like two, three, four years, you make haraka, Allah will send the barakah. And now you've got 400, 500, 1,000 students on your books. It was a side project. And now it's become the main focus of your life, subhanAllah. Allah will put barakah in it. And so every single one of us, think of something that you resonate with, think something that you like, and do something for the sake of the ummah. And if you don't have a project, then drop me a WhatsApp message, inshaAllah, and we'll help you out. Plus 27, 84414. 7184. Jade, this is if you have some sort of project for the Ummah, or if you don't have and you need some assistance, inshallah. Nothing besides that, be it Allah ta'ala. So it's plus two seven eight four four one four seven one eight four. Hayakumullah mashaykh. So number one. We spoke about the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his dua for the Ummah. When everybody is nafsi nafsi, he would be Ummati Ummati. Number two, we spoke about the wish of Umar Radiallahu Ta'ala and we said it's extremely pertinent because at that time Umar ibn al-Khattab was the was the Amir al-Mu'mineen. He was the leader of the believers, subhanAllah. Right? Number three, we said that every single one of us, we know in our personal lives and in our family lives, etc., we need to make amends and sort out matters and make toba, etc., etc. You're not talking to your brother, you're not talking to your sister for years on end. How else, are, how, how, how are you going to succeed anywhere else? Sort out these matters. And then number three, once you've sorted that out, then every one of you needs to focus on some sort of project, any project to benefit the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We know what our brothers and sisters in Gaza and how many other lands, we know the difficulties that they are going through. Allah Musta'an, Allah Musta'an. Hayyakum Allah, ya mashayikh, barakallahu fikum. And with that, we've uh, covered 23 minutes and we will end here now. Bismillahi ta'ala. If there are any questions, we will take those questions. Barakallahu Piko. No questions. Hayakumullah. Allah bless you all. Barakallahu Piko. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you all khair and barakah. Record our sitting here in our skills of good deeds. It was a reminder for you and a reminder for me. Hayakumullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.